We've all heard people saying, you're more likely to die in a car accident than a plane crash. Yeah, whatever. It's a little comfort to those who are understandably disturbed by the notion of flying hundreds of miles per hour in a big chunk of metal several miles above the earth. But in this video, I want to tell you how I changed my flying experiences from total panic and paralyzing fear to traveling without anxiety and even enjoying it at times. If you also struggle with aviophobia, a fear of flying, and you also refuse to get drunk or high on drugs in order to fly, then this video is for you. I haven't overcome my fear of flying. I still think it's super scary to be up in the air. I think we are simply not supposed to be flying. But I didn't let it or my fear stop me. And I have flown a lot in my life and it took me decades to get where I am at right now with flying. But the biggest shift happened in the past two years of my life. And I want to share with you all the steps I took because I am confident that some or all of these steps can help you too. And you will not need decades to see the progress. My name is Kinga and I started making YouTube videos right after my divorce to document for myself and my closest friend how I am reinventing myself and my whole life and intentionally challenging myself, facing my fears and gradually extending my tiny little comfort zone has been part of this journey of healing and, and growth. By the way, likes, comments and subs are all free and very welcome because they help me grow this channel. So if you find any value in this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. I used to cry and have full-blown panic attacks on the plane, but I didn't let that stop me. I think the drive in me to feel the freedom of traveling was much stronger. You also need to find your motivation. Is it traveling, seeing the world, meeting your friends or loved ones, or just simply facing your fear, growing your comfort zone and becoming a better, more confident you? All my life, I actually believed that I will never see any other part of the world than Europe because a two and a half hours flight was the maximum I thought I could or was willing to do. And I was comfortable with that. I actually made peace with the thought, you know, but, but then I met someone online and I just felt the need to go all the way to the US. So having the right motivation can push you to do things you wouldn't normally do. And what did flying for 13 hours back and forth do to me? It gave me more confidence in myself. It opened the whole world to me, you know, because it now makes me feel like nothing can stop me. And I want to explore more, fly even farther. So let me tell you, I understand how you feel about flying and it's not irrational. It's totally understandable. But there's a whole new, more colorful word on the other side of your comfort zone. And I want to help you get there. So unfortunately, my comfort zone is is tiny, is very small. But I understood early on that if I want a different life, I need to take different steps. I need to approach things differently than what feels comfortable. I need to seek the things that challenge me and come out on the other side feeling like, hey, I can actually do this. And all that gave me more confidence in myself, in my abilities, my survival skills, and opened many new doors. I chose what is called exposure therapy to deal with my fear of flying because I wanted to feel free, free to go anywhere, do things, you know, meet people in other countries, be exposed to new experiences and have a richer life. So I booked some flight within Europe uh, right after my divorce. Um, they say exposure therapy is really the best way to confront uh, a phobia because it enables a person to face the source of their fear and challenge their irrational thoughts and beliefs about it. If you decide not to fly, i.e. you choose the avoidance, then it just makes your fear worse. So if you really want to overcome a fear of uh, flying, the best thing or the first step you can do is to get yourself a plane ticket. That's what I did. I used to fly with my husband while I was married and I think knowing that I had someone to comfort me gave more space and air time for my drama. What I mean is when I had him next to me I would just let all my panic attacks and crying out because his presence offered a welcoming space 
or kind of like a stage for it. But when I first had to fly by myself, knowing that people would look at me weird, and the thought of that making me feel uncomfortable, certainly silenced the show that I would put on. I felt the need to kind of pull my shit together and try to act normal. So even though I suffered inside and every cell of my body was tense, I tried not to show it or at least minimize, you know, expressing it on the outside. I honestly think that forcing yourself to fly and fly alone without anyone to cry to, you will be a bit more put together. You know when, when you actually see kids playing, running around and one of them falls and hits themselves bad? If the parent runs there and has a scared or sad facial expression and even their voice expresses worry, the kid will most likely cry. However, if the parent acknowledges the fall and just pick the kid up with a smile and like, hey, nothing happened, you know, not showing any sign of worry or shock, but they just say, hey, you're okay, the kid will kind of mirror that, and in most cases, even smile themselves and not get dramatic over their sudden fright and, um, and even pain. I'm not talking about a huge accident where they, you know, cut their head open or whatever, but I've seen examples to both parenting um, techniques, and many times it's pretty interesting how kids would mirror their parents' reactions. So I think something similar happens when you as an adult feel anxiety. If you get a stage or a sort of audience to express your anxiety to, you will feed your anxiety more and it would get worse. But if you have no one to express it to because no one is responsive or comforting and you know you have to appear normal, you would try to deal with it inside and that alone can silence it, which will affect your whole level of anxiety. It's crucial to do everything you can to calm your body, to send it signals that it's not in danger, regardless of what you actually think of flying. I felt it many times that when I let my fear overtake and I sit during the whole flight all tensed up, I would be more responsive to the smallest change in the sounds and, uh, and the motions around me, you know, experience throughout the flying. I'm not even talking about big turbulences, just like small movements and sounds. If my body is already in fear, then the smallest things can set my, my alarm off and put me in absolute panic. But if I manage to sort of calm my body, then this threshold would be much higher, as in I wouldn't necessarily respond to every little thing, you know, some changes in the sounds or movement by the plane, it could just all pass by my attention. And how do you calm your body, regardless of what you think of lying? There are two ways. Try both, you know, just to see which works best for you. One is distraction. The other is the exact opposite, mindfulness. So you either watch a movie or read a book, listen to a podcast, play some game on your phone or your whatever device you have while flying. You could try something challenging to your brain, like like take a piece of paper and use your opposite hand to write something. So for example, if you're right-handed, write something with your left hand, your name or whatever. Give yourself a challenging task to keep your brain sharp and focused instead of your fear of the actual situation that you're in. But if you are anything like me, distraction will not work. I always think, analyze, observe. And if I don't feel safe, I won't be able to focus on a book or a movie or any task. My mind will be busy focusing on what's going on around and inside me. So close your eyes and watch how your body reacts and feels in this stressful situation. Turn your attention to every physiological response in your body. You know, the increased heart rate, heart rate, your pulse, sweating or whatever. Just observe it, don't judge it acknowledge what is going on. Don't judge it if it's, if it's good or not, if your reaction or fear is realistic or not. Just observe it and be present. Take it a step further. Separate yourself from your body's response. Try to see yourself like if you were, if you were looking at yourself from the inside, like separate your thoughts from your body. Observe your feelings and reactions like if you or your thoughts were of a different person's. It will help you get out of this autopilot mode that we are in sometimes, you know, where we just react to things. And it will help you be more conscious and mindful at the moment. 
And that's a great time for some belly breathing. Deep breathing is one of the best ways to lower stress in the body. This is because when you breathe deeply, it sends a message, a signal to your brain to calm down and relax because you're safe. The brain then sends this message back to your body and your increased heart rate, the fast breathing and high blood pressure will slowly decrease. Belly breathing is easy to do and very relaxing. This is how you do it. Put one hand on your belly, you actually can't see it on a video right now, and the other hand on your chest and take a deep breath in through your nose. And let your belly push your hand out. Your chest shouldn't move. And then you breathe out through your mouth. Feel the hand on your belly going in and use it to push all the air out. Do this breathing five to 10 times. So in, belly, out, chest or shoulders not moving. Another thing that helps me calm my body is music. I have a track that, that makes me feel happy and safe and I would just put it on repeat during the whole experience like boarding, takeoff, flying, landing. Last time I actually flew to the US, that one single track was on for 15 hours or create a whole playlist of songs that have a calming effect on you. By the way, noise cancelling headphones are a must to filter out all the annoying chatter around you, the crying babies, and most of the funny sounds the plane makes. You don't want to hear that. They are also the best when listening to meditations, which I highly recommend. I actually created a calming meditation for myself for flying, which I use prior to the whole experience. Like I do it on the day before taking a long haul flight, then at the airport, you know, while I'm waiting, before boarding actually, and then during the flight, if it's very bumpy. On short trips within Europe, I'm okay without it. I added this meditation to my webshop where you can download it for a small fee. I will leave the link and a 50% discount code in the description. It's especially good for those people who don't want to remember all the steps that I'm listing in this video. They just want to put their headphones on and just listen to a meditation where I guide them through some belly breathing to calm their thoughts and body. And I also help them visualize. Yes, people, visualizing is the next important step. Visualizing what? Three things, actually. First of all, we need to feel safe and protected. I actually do this every time I get into my car as well. I close my eyes and I imagine that I am in this golden or shiny white bubble and that my car gets a similar bubble too, which protects me and my vehicle from every possible collision or accident. Similarly, I visualize myself and my fellow passengers on the plane being surrounded by a protective bubble. It can be, you know, like one big bubble for everyone or like a separate individual ones for each person. And then I imagine a bigger bubble around the plane itself. I actually guide you through that in the meditation. I also find it necessary to visualize what my desired future will be after landing. I was once flying to Budapest from Stockholm and I was consumed by my fear. I hate a lot of things about flying. I hate that I have no idea who is flying the plane, i never seen them, never met them, having to trust someone blindly, putting my life in their hands without knowing or meeting them. It just drives me crazy. Giving over control to someone I don't even see. So I went to speak to one of the flight attendants and I asked if I could talk to the pilot. I was already shaking with fear and I was in tears, you know, by then. And I don't know why and how, but they actually let me into the cockpit to talk to the pilot. I actually heard that it's, it's not legal or it's not allowed to do. He was so kind and calm, you know, that it had an instant effect on me. I explained to him what I was going through and how scared I was that we're gonna crash and die, to which he said in the calmest and most natural way. That's impossible. My family is waiting for me with a nice dinner. I have to be home tonight. <sighs> this worked. His calmness, his confidence in his future plan made it sound and feel like there was no other possible outcome but to land safely. And my vision of him with his family later that evening just really calmed me. So every time I fly, 
I go and talk to the pilot. No, so every time I fly, I now envision myself doing fun things in the city I'm flying to with the person I'm visiting. Like if I was already there, you know? I also guide you through a future visualiz visualization in my meditation link and the 50% discount code in the description. The third thing I visualize sometimes is that I'm not even on a plane. Like that's what I visualize. And that especially helps me when there's a crazy turbulence. I like to imagine that we are on a bus driving on a bumpy road. It puts everything in a different perspective. And when you actually close your eyes, it can feel like that. And when I think I'm on the ground instead of up in the air, I already feel better. Tip number six. Basically the last one, but I'm also gonna give you a bonus tip. Now this is something much deeper than the previous ones. It's about finding the true cause of your fear. Sometimes it can root in events unrelated to flying or even unrelated to you and your life. Basically, your whole fear of flying can stem from a traumatic event where you or one of your ancestors felt unsafe. How do I know this? Well, during my 20s and 30s, I went to lots of family constellation therapy sessions. It was developed by a German psychotherapist called Bert Hellinger in the mid-1990s. Uh, it's used to break destructive family patterns. Hellinger observed that traumatic events such as death, abandonment, crime, suicide, they all have a powerful effect on later generations, not just the person who lived through the trauma. Family members often continue these patterns of anxiety, depression, anger, guilt, fear, and even chronic illness or unfulfilled relationships. Family constellation has brought clarity to me on so many levels, you know, and, and, and on so many of my personal problems. I understood where they came from and that itself was healing in, in so many cases. And most of the time, the results were like immediate. I noticed that every time during takeoff, I kept repeating the same sentence. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. And I remember in one of my family constellation sessions, it was revealed to me that takeoff represented birth to me. And there were many uncertain factors around my birth. After the therapy, I went to ask my mom, because I wanted confirmation, you know, but she actually did confirm that she herself felt very unsafe prior to and during my birth because of her uncertain relationship with my father at the time. Family constellation has solved many of my issues with just, you know, one session. But deeper issues like this needed more occasions. And it certainly helped me start a shift in my feelings towards flying too. And actually I was thinking that there may be a connection between me healing my relationship with mom the past two years uh, and recently, and me all of a sudden enjoying flying. I actually made some videos on that, you know, my whole re healing my relationship with my mom. I'm going to link them in the description. I have a bonus tip for you also, which I personally haven't yet taken. That's why it's just a bonus tip, because I feel the need to mention it here, because I could see how it could benefit those with aviophobia. I think that we are always more scared of the unknown, you know, things that we don't understand, right? And someone told me, that I should read more about aerodynamics to understand flying and how plane, planes work. And I agree, you know, I similarly think that taking a flying lesson can also be extremely beneficial. Most of us are actually not scared of flying itself, but more like of the feeling of, you know, just being out of control and also not understanding what is going on around us. So demystifying the whole flying experience, the turbulences that you may experience, how planes work by taking real flying lessons in a real plane or even just a simulator can give you more understanding and confidence during flying. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel if you found any value in my video. Don't forget to check out the meditation in the description now at a half price and hope to see you soon. Oh, and have a safe flight. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.